Hi, this is John from Sharp Mountain Games, and today we're taking a look at Iron Falcon, the RPG from the same author who brought us the basic fantasy RPG. Let's take a look at it after the intro. So today we're taking a look at the Iron Falcon RPG, Rules for Classic Fantasy Roleplay by Chris Gonerman. Now just a little disclaimer here at the beginning. I've done a lot of free artwork for Basic Fantasy RPG, which Chris Gonerman also wrote. And I have done a couple of pieces for Iron Falcon, a couple of art pieces for which I was paid. Um, just I wanted to say that disclaimer here at the beginning so that you know I've had some involvement with the process. Although I don't make any money from any sales of Iron Falcon. So I think I can give a somewhat objective review here. Now, first of all, why is it called Iron Falcon? The first actual supplement that came out for Dungeons & Dragons was Grey Hawk. So Chris took Iron Falcon, you know, Grey Hawk, and kind of a little play on words there. And you can see a very nice black and white kind of old school cover with um, a dragon and some adventurers. So what is Iron Falcon? It's a restatement of the original D&D box set from 1974. And it also includes information from Greyhawk, which was the first supplement that um, Gary Gygax wrote for that. Now, why include Greyhawk? The original box set apparently only included, you had your fighter, your magic users, which are your wizards, and your clerics as classes. But Greyhawk added the thief and the paladin class. And certainly they've become very standard for anybody who um, does role-playing um, fantasy role-playing. So Iron Falcon does include information from the Greyhawk uh, supplement. And also, one thing I would say is Iron Falcon includes all the rules you need to play. Now, why am I specifically stressing that? Because the original box set didn't. It kind of assumed that you also had the chainmail rules, and I believe another game called Outdoor Survival. So there were some holes in the rule sets, um, whereas Iron Falcon tries to patch up those holes, and it is really a complete book. It's what you need. It's 143 pages. You can get paperback, you can get hardback, and it's very reasonable. The best price I found for the paperback as of recording this video was $9 on Amazon, so that's certainly cheap enough. Um, and if you want to take a look at it before you buy it, if you want to see, you know, whether it's for you or not, you can get a P the PDF for free on drive through. So let's take a look at the digital version of the book. So this is a look at the digital version of Iron Falcon, again, by Chris Gonerman, who also wrote Basic Fantasy RPG, dedicated to Gary, without whom none of this would exist. And I'm not going to go page by page because that would take quite a long time, but I'm going to give you an overview of what's here in the book. So introduction. All the rules for creating a character and all the charts are here. So if anybody is familiar with Basic Expert, Basic Fantasy, um, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, any of the older games, everything here will look very, very familiar and comfortable. And you have the fighters. These should be called fighting men back in the original, but fighters is probably a better way to say it these days. Your magic users, your clerics, and your thieves are here. And the thief is given as a standard class. In Greyhawk, it was an add-on, but here it's a standard class, and certainly it's become standard, you know, for 40 or 50 years nearly. You get your standard races, your dwarves, your halflings, your elves, and of course, oh, half-elves also, and humans. And I believe, interestingly, in the original Dungeons & Dragons, they actually used the word hobbits, but then the Tolkien people got after them, and they, they can't do that. You get rules for multi multi-classing. Now, one thing I want to point out on this page, now I don't have the print version in front of me, so I'm not sure if there's some art to fill up all this white space, but there isn't a lot of art in the book. This is really more for people who are really interested in rule sets and game design and what was uh, Dungeons and Dragons like back in the day. So there's not as much artwork in here. And this is a for-profit thing, so he has to pay for the artwork that he's doing, you know, and as a small publisher, that, that can get expensive. So we have everything. Oh, here's here's what's really nice. There's a sample character going through the process of how to make the character and how to equip them. Weapons, very standard. And again, everything here is very standard. You could easily port things in from another old school edition or even a modern edition. You could probably port in different equipment and armor and things like that, and you won't break it. You may need to make some minor adjustments for the more modern uh, rule sets. 
all the rules for combat, uh, attacking, charging, damage, healing, morale, things like that, using oil as a weapon. Um, clerics versus the undead table is here. So as I said, all of this is going to be super familiar for anybody playing old school. The very standard uh, saving throw matrices for fighters, and you have your death ray, wands, turn to stone, dragon breath, and um, staves and spells. So all that's here. Oh, item saving throws are here. And then we get into our spells. So we have all the old school spells listed here. Again, very similar to a basic fantasy. So let me skip down here a bit just to show you some other stuff. So there's our spells. Oh, then we get into our monsters. And you can see how the monsters are very, very terse. And that's not a bad thing. You can get what you need very, very quickly. I should mention, too, if I didn't already, that this uses descending armor class. So you would need a little chart, you know, on the character sheet for um, to write down um, what your two hit numbers are and all that. However, if you don't like descending armor class, and obviously ascending armor class has been around since third edition. So, I mean, it's, it's not like a new thing. It's well over 20 years old. Um, it's very easy to, to flip that. For your monsters, you would probably just make their hit dice, their attack bonus. So I'm looking here, the ogre is um, four plus one hit dice, so he'd probably be a plus four to hit. And then you could check out the charts and um, make the changes for your fighters and your wizards and things like that pretty easily. I used to run um, Basic Expert, and it was very easy for me to pretty much just convert on the fly. Um, and it was also, I would say, it's easier to use Ascending Armor class for online play but for in-person play where you have a paper character sheet in front of you it's really not that bad it really is not that arcane as people think in fact sometimes it's even quicker you just quick look at the chart you don't have to add anything and then they give you some um, kind of random encounter tables if you want to make up a random dungeon here random wilderness tables and terrain so some stuff here that absolutely you could use if you want to um, help spur your creativity or make up a quick en encounter or a quick adventure, some NPC information, and a nice section on treasure. And real soon, we're going to get to what I think is my favorite part of the, um, and there's scrolls, a little piece of public domain artwork. But we're going to get to my favorite part of the book. So I want to make sure I don't go too fast and skip by it. So we get all the um, treasure and opening doors and secret doors. It's all in here. And here's what's really nice. You're not hunting through three books if you need this. I'm really a one book kind of guy. When I'm DMing, I like everything in one book so I can just have that next to me and I can find it immediately. Uh, hirelings, because that was pretty common in the old school. Uh, there's some alternate combat rules here. If you want to include weapons versus armor type or ex um, exceptional strength. Now the paladin is back here too. Um, it's not listed as a standard class, but you can certainly add the Paladin, uh, the, the Holy Knight idea, um, into your game. Intelligent Swords were a big thing back in the day, so it gives you some information on that. Now, here's my favorite part of the book. Uh, this Appendix C, the Referee's Guide, because specifically it says, here's different ways to play the game. Now, some other editions do that too, but I really like this here. Because it says, do you want to play at the author's choice? Where it says, okay, here's the rules to use, and here's the rules I don't use. Do you want to play at the oldest school? In other words, how to play it um, as close as you can to the original Dungeons & Dragons. And it, it does mention that uh, Iron Falcon has more magic items than the original rules did. Or what he calls the full Gary. How close can you get, you know, as far as we know, to the way Gary Gygax actually ran his game. So I think that's really great that specifically right in the rules, they're saying, hey, here's things you can change. Here's things you can keep. Here's things you can leave out depending on the experience you want. Um, and again, is this game, it says the purists will tell you that neither the last two will fully reproduce the games of the early years. And that's true. But however, even back in the day, that assumes everybody was playing exactly the same. And I don't think that's ever been true. And other people have said this on YouTube as well. Um, that we all play the game slightly differently. Every Dungeon Master runs it slightly differently. Uh, very few people are playing it exactly rules as written. 
And they certainly weren't back in the day. It certainly weren't. I was playing way back when in the early 80s, and I know we weren't. And we still had a blast. Okay. And so it talks about magical research. Oh, and it gives you some options. You know, because there's certainly this um, notion, and it's true, you know, that the old school could be very deadly. So maybe you want to have two or three characters um, in case one dies or, you know, like kind of a character funnel like DCC. But he gives you some options to make it a little bit less deadly if you'd like. And again, this is great, too, because here's this campaign checklist. You could go through here and you could check off, okay, I want to play the full Gary. Um, determination of abilities, no, the player should roll those. Uh, only the fighters are going to get their strength to hit and damage, damage bonus and things like that. You could just, there's totally a checklist here to say, here's what I want, here's what I don't want. Let's put some notes for some house rules down there. And again, like I said, that's my favorite part of the book. And we got a character sheet here. And you can see the on the um, the right here, the two hit roll table. It really isn't that bad. Trust me. We've, we used it for years and it's not that bad. But if you like Ascending Armor class, you know, and again, most modern games do, that's absolutely fine. And then we get to the OGL. So to wrap up, let's take a look at who should buy the book. If you're interested in a lighter system, maybe you're playing a later edition right now, and it can be a bit much, um, at least for, for me. You know, people are busy. People have other things in life. They may want a lighter system, but still want to play a fantasy game like Dungeons and Dragons. And this certainly would fit the bill. If you're interested, you know, historically in the origins of the game, you know, what did the earliest mechanics look like? This is really, I think, a good way to do that. Um, to get the same information and it's all in one place and take a look at, well, what did this game look like in 1974, 1975? Um, I should also mention there's some supplements for it too. There's a monster book, there's an adventure book, um, and there's another book that has to do with um, Iron Falcon 75, which tries to sort of bring it into a, a modern um, version. So it's a modern setting book. And if you get the paperbacks for all of these, it's very, very affordable. You could probably get all the paperbacks for the manufacturer's price of one uh, modern hardback. I also think it's interesting for people who are interested in game design theory. If you're trying to write your own RPG or you want to hack an RPG, because there's specifically a section in the back of the book, as we said, that talks about, you know, what pieces do you want to include? What pieces don't you want to include? So where can you get it? You can get it at Amazon, Lulu, and Drive Through RPG, which is where you can get the free PDF. So thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. And if you'd like to check out the titles from Sharp Mountain Games, you can see our two in-print adventures, The Dwarven Pickup Truck and The Sky Tree at Amazon, Lulu, or Drive Through RPG. You can also check out our digital titles, which include adventures, map packs, new character classes, and character cards, and they're at Drive Through RPG or the Roll20 Marketplace. Wherever you like to shop, odds are that we're there. So you know what to do if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. All the links um, to our products are in the description below. And thanks, and we hope to see you again soon.